what is going on guys welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video in today's video we have a bmw behind us 328 come with the n20 n26 depending on the sulev and the year and we are going to be replacing the turbo today so we'll go ahead and do a walkthrough on how to replace the turbo on a four cylinder bmw engine first thing we're going to do is go ahead and set it up on the lift go ahead and remove this air box uh, remove the covers obviously because we have to access the o2 sensor connectors that sit at the back of the valve cover and then as well as remove the charge pipe and the inlet to the turbo so these just pop up as you pull on them each one then you have a clamp here connector here if the car is Sulev, like this one is, you're going to have this vacuum line running off the top of the valve cover to the back of the intake. Go ahead and stick a pick or something in there. And be careful because these nipples break all the time. And if it breaks, you need a whole new housing. So just keep working that off until it comes off. Like so. Now we'll go ahead and tackle the inlet. I'll go ahead and remove this just to get it out of our way. And we have this line here, connector, uh, some evap lines, vacuum lines, another one down here. Um, disconnect the wastegate as well as another controller sensor down in there. Once you take this top line off here, you gotta take this bottom one off, but the nipple always fucking breaks. So be very careful. I'm gonna try my best not to break this and we'll see what happens. Out of a guy with some finger muscle and a pick we got it off um in this case disconnected while we're still on the top side of the vehicle i'm going to go ahead and loosen up that 16 there on the motor mount it'll make our lives a lot easier and then remove the uh, two connectors on the back of the valve cover right there move on to the bottom remove the lower splash shield remove the stiffening plate and then uh i'm gonna head and sprayed some uh, penetrating oil on these two nuts here that hold the catalytic converter to this mount here that pulls off the transmission next up we uh, are going to loosen up that clamp there loosen up these two bolts moving on towards the back there's a brace here i already took that off it's uh, some t50s moving on to the rear you're gonna have a 13 millimeter bolt here connector here and then another 13 there once you drop the exhaust i went ahead and loosened up this splash shield here on the passenger side wheel well in order to loosen up the clamp for the catalytic converter i use an extension with a swivel up there um the nuts were rusted to heck so i went ahead and loosened up these two bolts here for the trans and then you can see that the cat is now out now we're going to go ahead and remove this mount here so you want to grab a pole jack with a block of wood as you see there lift up the motor a little bit loosen up the four bolts to the motor mount um, that sits on top of here or the motor mount uh, bracket and now we'll loosen up the motor mount and then tackle the turbo so to take the motor mount out you just have three bolts one two and three um, sits right there now you're gonna go ahead and loosen up these two e10s one there one there I'm sorry if it's so dark and then you have a t50 for this clamp here and then we'll go ahead and move on to the front to remove the charge pipe in the inlet moving on you can see the charge pipe is now off I use a long pick just to pull that um, that clamp off that pull that right off and then I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see but there is a 10 millimeter nut right there for the inlet pipe so we'll go ahead and remove that now once you get that 10 out you come back up here to the top try and grab as close as possible to the inlet and then just slowly wiggle this out and it'll come out just like so we get this out of the way and now one last connector here that i wasn't able to get i'll go ahead and disconnect that now once you loosen up the inlet and remove it we are now going to go ahead and tackle the coolant and oil lines i sit on that side of the turbo there is a t30 holding both of them in um, i like to go through the wheel well as well with a nice extension get that out of the way pop those lines out that is probably the messiest part 
we'll go ahead and loosen up these two T30s down here as well for the oil return. And then the oil feed line, I'd like to uh, remove from here. Um, so we'll loosen that up as soon as we're ready to come out with the turbo because a lot of oil will come out of there as well. So I currently have the coolant draining out of the side. And then I also loosened up the oil feed line. Once I go ahead and crack that loose, I usually stuff a rag up in there so that the oil doesn't constantly drip down the side of the block. So once that's done uh, peeing, I'll go ahead and loosen up the coolant feed line and then we'll tackle the 11s as well as one more bracket in the front side. Once you loosen up both of the coolant lines, you're gonna have another uh, bracket in the front of the turbo. I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see, but right under the inlet pipe, um, where we removed the first inlet, the stud that that nut bolts to is bolted into the turbo. So you're gonna go ahead and remove that. And now we're gonna go ahead and tackle the 11 millimeter bolts. Starting from the bottom, we'll move on to the top, remove that heat shield that sits up there, and then she should come right out. Once you loosen up all of the 11 at the top, all you gotta do is wiggle this and she'll come off. And then now we'll go from the bottom, we'll push, or we'll get these out right now actually. And you just pull it out from the bottom so you can see turbo is now out it's on the ground we're going to go ahead and swap over the oil feed line from there into our new turbo over here so this will be for the two coolant lines oil return and then the oil feed will go right here and then along with the turbo we have a new hardware kit we have been clamped for the cat bunch of gaskets and all rings in there for the lines and then some new nuts and new bolts for the lines as well went ahead and put the new gaskets onto the new turbo they don't have to sit completely flush you just start them bang them down a little bit with a screwdriver just be careful because this is very brittle so you'll hit away and take chunks out of the gasket if you are too hard with the screwdriver so gaskets are in um, now to swap over the feed line and then very common issue when the vehicle is very old that these studs come out with the turbo so you can see there's a stud here that's still on the head and the rest of them are missing so we have to take the studs out of the nuts that came out put them back in the head and then we'll go back in with the turbo quick update I'm still trying to locate some new studs for the uh, for the head but in the meantime, um, now that the turbo was out, I went ahead and loosened up the water pump. There's three bolts down there and I hold it in. And loosening that allows you to remove this little bracket here, which will make your life a lot easier going back in with the turbo. Um, the water pump is in the way, so you gotta re remove the water pump, loosen this bracket, and then uh, we'll be able to finesse the turbo back in there, put this back in, and start reassembly once I get new studs. All right, quick little update. Turbo is back in. All of the nuts are tightened up. I went ahead and put this little brace back in here on the bottom. Uh, reinstalled the oil feed. Oil your drain is back in, coolant lines are back in. Um, you kind of have to finesse the coolant lines through the turbo, in between the turbo and the wastegate. Um, so that's a little bit of a nightmare, but you get it done. And then moving on towards the front, um, I got that bracket back in, bolted up the water pump again. So right now it's time to put the inlet back in, charge pipe back in, um, heat shield up top, of the head another shield back here um, once that's all good to go we'll go ahead and put this mount back in so we can put the motor mount back in there get the cat back in exhaust back up so let's go uh, motor mount brackets in motor mount is in uh, everything's buttoned up as far as down here goes put the v-band clamp on there uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the cat back in put the exhaust up and then uh, we'll finish up 
the front side. All right, guys. So the catalytic converter is back in. The exhaust is back in. That's all tightened up. I moved on here to the front of the car. Went ahead and tightened the shield back up. Looking down, you can see the cat is in. The nut is back in from the top for the motor mount. 16 millimeter there. Um, so moving on, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in, put the inlet back in, top off the coolant reservoir, bleed the coolant system, and then um, we'll go ahead and clear the faults and give it our first startup. And once the car is running, gets the operating temperature, we'll measure the engine oil. Make sure we go ahead and top that off because I wanna say we lost about half a quart, maybe a full quart. Uh, so we'll go from there. For those of you who don't know to bleed the coolant system on these BMWs with electric water pumps, you get in the car, turn the lights on, uh, latch the door here, put the heat all the way on, AC off, and then the gas pedal past the detent, hold it all the way down to the floor for about 10 seconds. That'll activate the water pump and get all of the air out of the system. Now running, alive and well. Uh, gonna monitor the coolant, gonna let it reach operating temp to uh, top off the oil. You will see some smoke coming from the turbo um, after a fresh install, as all of the oil burns off with your fingers from touching it and whatnot. Um, at this point, I'll go ahead and raise the car up, put all of these shields back on, and then we'll go from there. So just another tip here. For those of you who aren't too BMW friendly, uh, we are now in the car. As you can see I'm measuring the engine oil level because these vehicles do not come with the dipstick. Um, if you do not know how to get to this menu, you simply go to vehicle info. Um, it's gonna be different. Some uh, I drives are gonna be a little different, but for these F30s, for these certain years, um, you see engine oil level, and then you'll just click on start measurement, and there you have it. Um, engine oil level okay, right up to the max. So this uh, this car is now good to go for the most part. We'll go ahead and give it a road test. We'll get it back on the road. Thanks for tuning in to today's video, guys. A quick R&R um, &R on a turbo, uh, BMW Motors N20, N26. And you know, we do it all here at German Motors. Come see me, come see Mo. One of us here will take care of you. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Sorry I've been so MIA, but please stay tuned as more videos are on the way.